Well, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. John McClain. And in this Providential Four uh, discussion, I'm going to uh, go over the questions that I raised uh, at the end of the previous uh, session, questions about the Trinity. So let me open up the screen share here and uh, look at these questions and provide uh, the brief answers that I can. So how can a three be one? Uh, part of the answer is that uh, it isn't a math equation. And uh, just like uh, you can say there's a dozen, meaning 12, or a baker's dozen, meaning uh, 13, uh, the terminology that there are three entities, uh, three beings, uh, all of them equal, and all of them God, and yet there was one God, uh, one essence. Uh, it doesn't make mathematical sense, but uh, it isn't a mathematical equation. Why or how is God three and not two or four? You know, why didn't uh, God choose to be two? Why didn't God choose to be four or five? And uh, the answer is God is three. If God is one, uh, there is simply a monologue. If God is two, there is a dialogue. Uh, with God being three, there is, uh, in a sense, uh, personality uh, engagement. And of course, uh, this is a uh, existence that is outside the limits of uh, humanity or the creation of humanity. So uh, God in his essence in eternality uh, is three. Don't know uh, all the reason why that is. Uh, so why is the need for God to be three? Again, monologue, dialogue, and uh, the sense of uh, multiple discussion or multiple roles. Uh, why does God reveal himself as one in the Old Testament instead of Trinitarianism? And I would say that because God is revealing himself against the backdrop of uh, polytheism, uh, many, many, many gods, in some ways uh, pantheism, but polytheism is what we see in ancient Near Eastern uh, history most. And so he is revealing himself as the one singular true God against the backdrop of all the uh, hundreds and thousands of other gods associated with other cultures and against the backdrop of that idolatry. Uh, how are three equals yet there is subordination? And the answer to that to me is that subordination does not mean inequality. Uh, subordination means different roles. And that just because one is subordinated to another, the uh, Father to the Son, the Holy Spirit uh, to the Son, it does not mean that there's inequality. Uh, it deals with roles and fulfillment of roles and responsibilities and the sovereignty of the single triune triunity of God. Uh, do you have to believe in the triunity of God to be saved? And I would say no. The uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, which I think is the clearest uh, statement in the New Testament of the gospel, uh, mentions that one has to believe in personal sin, uh, in the uh, deity of Christ, and uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. And so uh, the fact that throughout uh, the Old Testament period, there was no Trinity explicitly revealed or understood, and in fact, that it took the church 300 years to formulate uh, a, a common uh, doctrine of the uh, Trinity or triunity of God, uh, I, I don't think you have to believe in the Trinity to be saved. Now, can you deny the Trinity of God and be saved? And uh, by this, I'm talking about kind of an act of denial, the oneness Pentecostals and 
and all the other people uh, that uh, fit into that uh, denial, of course, completely different is Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and Christian science and all of those uh, who would deny the deity of Christ uh, and even deny the real essence of God. But to uh, uh, deny the triunity of God, I think, would be difficult for somebody who was truly saved. I think a person that uh, is saved and indwelt by the Holy Spirit, uh, reads the scriptures, hears the scriptures, or participates in a biblical community, uh, the Holy Spirit will guide and direct them uh, to an understanding or trust in a trinity triunity of God. If there's an adamant act of denial, uh, then uh, I think the next question uh, comes into play. Uh, are you a heretic if you deny the triunity of God? And of course, heresy is determined in a sense by the unified church uh, doctrine. And since uh, this has from the 300s become uh, part of the essentials, the essence, the uh, unnegotiable uh, parts of uh, the uh, Trish Christian church, I think the answer is yes. If you're uh, denying the triunity of God, then you are a heretic. Now, if you're a heretic, are you unsaved? I would say probably so, uh, but that is a, uh, again, uh, uh, each individual heart. Uh, what is the role of the triunity in salvation? I think Ephesians uh, shows this uh, very much, uh, where it shows that God purposed it, uh, Christ uh, provided for it, and the Holy Spirit uh, applies it. But you do see uh, the Holy Spirit, for instance, in preparatory sanctification, uh, that he is working to set apart a person uh, prior to their salvation. And so you see uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit involved in salvation, particularly with the progressive revelation and illumination of the uh, New Testament. Why and how does the Trinity uh, inhabit humanity? Now, a lot of churches, uh, you know, they focus on the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the one who is sent by Jesus uh, so that we would not be orphans, so that we would not be uh, alone. Uh, but uh, John does teach Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwelling within humanity, uh, even though the primary ministry that is taught is that of the Holy Spirit in our spiritual growth and in lifting up Jesus Christ. Uh, can you grow spiritually without knowing about the triunity of God? And I would say yes. Uh, without knowing about it, it could uh, limit your spiritual growth, uh, limit your understanding of all the ministries of the Holy Spirit, you know, in prayer, in conviction, in grieving about sin, the indwelling, the baptism, the security that he provides, and all uh, that goes along with that are important, uh, is important knowledge. But I do think that you can grow. And, and again, people uh, did in the early uh, church and probably even today, where there is a limited understanding of all of the scriptures. And then finally, questions about the emphasis of the Holy Spirit in church movements when he was sent to glorify Jesus and not himself. Now, the Bible clearly says, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit is sent, he's going to glorify me. He's going to lift up me. He's going to point to me, Jesus Christ. And so if you're part of a church or ministry or spiritual life, where you are over-emphasizing uh, the Holy Spirit, over-focusing on the Holy Spirit, then I think there's something wrong there. And the Holy Spirit uh, would not exalt himself above uh, Jesus Christ, nor above 
uh, God the Father. So uh, those are my answers uh, to uh, these questions and uh, trying to just give a short answers, interested in what you have to think about it, uh, discuss it amongst your group. And if you have something you'd like to share with me, uh, Dr. John McClain at gmail.com. Thank you very much.